Come and play with us, Daddy. Forever. And ever. And ever. Communion After Dark
dark it is the week of october 24th and we have a very special guest here in the studio with us or via zoom with us uh sammy from faderhead yes, yes. Sammy, thank you. good evening hey thank you good thank evening. you so much for joining us we truly appreciate that very excited to have you on um and we will have some questions we'll be talking to uh sammy here soon and then we'll also um uh, he'll be playing a DJ set for you, which is great. And he'll, he'll let you know what he played here um, coming up in a few few sets. But you just heard the first set of our show. Um, and I'm Paradise again, just, uh, just so you're aware in case you forgot. Uh, the last track in my set was by an artist called Airman out of Germany. And Sammy, you can probably correct me on the way this is all pronounced. But um, so, the, Sounds the, good. Yeah, so far okay good the, the song is called secret service which is the uh, black cloak version uh gehammer service geheimer service Ge geheimer service okay thank you geheimer wait, service but, which i'm guessing that's, means... that's really weird is that like secret service is the original title because geheimer service is it doesn't exist in german it, do, it doesn't it does, yeah, he he has. It's a four-track EP that this artist released, and he uh, the first track is in English under, okay. uh, and then the mm -hmm. other ones are under the Geheimer Service uh, uh, version. So they're in uh, Deutsch, or you know, so he's singing in uh, the German language on the other three tracks. Uh, but, but they're is he, all. Is he, is he German? Is he German? They are from uh, they are from Germany. Yes. All mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. So all right. that was. That was the track seven in my set. Uh, track six in my set was by Omnimar. Uh, Omnimar has a brand new track out called The Matrix. Um, it's a brand new EP called The Matrix. I love this track, by the way. Excellent song. And um, it's on Dark Tunes Music Group. Just came out. Check it out if you're, uh, in, if you're a fan of Omnimar or if you haven't heard them before. I think you'll enjoy that track. Uh, the fifth track in my set was by Kevorkian Death Cycle out of the u.s uh working death cycle is a band that's been around for many years started in the uh, early 90s um and the song you heard was still it's a new single that is out uh or two track ep i believe the ep is called what you see to what you see is death and that's on negative game productions that new ep um and you can pick it up on Bandcamp again all our links for these um songs are on communityafterdark.com or on our playlist and before that, you heard Paradise play brand new Aeon Rings um, out of the uh, US here in Florida. And that track was Adam Hatem. That's on the album Enemy, also on Negative Gain Productions. All right. And the third track you heard in Paradise's set was by Intent Outtake from Germany. The song was called Generation Dead, and that's from their TikTok Tot <laughs> off scanner records. I, I have a feeling that that's the, how, how is that supposed to be pronounced? Probably the, a TikTok toad because uh, oh, toad, toad, toad. toad means death and it's it's toad. pronounced long toad. Toad okay. without an A. Yeah. Like a that's frog a, toad. Some good, <laughs> no toad. That's a, yeah, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a club TikTok banger frog. there. Yeah, it's a good track. Yeah, and there's some, there's some, there's a, a bunch of uh, remixes on there. Some good stuff on that new EP that came out um, by that, by Intent I'll Take there on Scanner. Uh, the second track in my set was by C. Lecter out of Mexico. Uh, C. Lecter has a brand new album coming out very soon. I believe it actually comes out next week, um, October 28th. Or, yeah, yeah, it'll be, well, next Friday. 
uh, or this coming Friday, I should say, because this is actually, we're, we're on the 24th. I'm losing my thought here. I pro apologize. But this was off their brand new EP that is available for purchase already. The EP is called Are You Ready for the Bass? Uh, the song you heard was Don't Be Afraid, the club version. Excellent EP, or just good stuff in general. If you like club music, dark electro, it's a really good good new uh, release there. <coughs> and I apologize. The first track in my set was by Da Vantage uh, out of Germany, and they have a brand new release out uh, called Cold Border. Uh, it's an EP, self-released. And the song you heard was Grey Roads. That was the mesh remix of that track. Uh, I just love the song. I mean, uh, excellent, excellent remix that Mesh did of this track. And just a great track. Uh, Mel from uh, Davantage is on vocals there. And so I want to thank Mel as well for uh, sending that EP over uh, for us to play. But um, good, good new EP. Check it out. And again, all the links are available through our playlist. She's also in the Future Trail. Yeah, Future mm -hmm. Trail. That's right. I know. I know how much Future Trail she was still doing. Uh, but yep. Yeah. All right. So Sammy's here. We're going to do a shot of the week in his honor because Ooh. we're so happy to have him on the show. I'm so, happy to be here. Thank you. We really <laughs> appreciate. It. You, you got your. You got yours. Winters and gold. Yep. I do. All right. Just hold it up to the camera, gold. Okay. There we go. All right. All right. Really Shot of the week right. time. Cheers. 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 Prost. 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 Uh, drink your drink. There we go. Ooh, refreshing. Oh, so what, what was yours? <laughs> we should ask, since you're the guest, what was your shot? My shot was just water. <laughs> That's why I said refreshing. <laughs> I have stopped drinking. So, yeah, uh, smart. Oh, okay. Smart. <laughs> smart guy. I drink more than enough for about five people in my lifetime so uh at some point i i'm i'm pushing almost 50 now so at some point i couldn't couldn't do it wow. anymore and yeah i know i i'm telling myself the same thing i'm i'm turning uh mid 50s soon well early 50s i don't want to yeah. give it away too much gold gold's a little older than me too so <laughs> it gets it gets a little much after a while for sure yeah so. but my shot was uh, peanut butter whiskey again, because I have it at home with amaretto this time and uh, butterscotch schnapps. It was actually really tasty. I mean, I wouldn't drink a whole glass of that because it'll make you sick, but uh, a little shot of it doesn't uh, hurt you too much, I wouldn't think. Did, did you say peanut, peanut butter whiskey? Mm -hmm. Peanut butter, yes. Mm -hmm. So how's that? Do they put peanut butter in the in the whiskey machine? <laughs> I'm not, you know, or... I don't know how they make it. That's a good question. That'd be something to like look up. I, I really don't know how they actually create that that <laughs> concoction. Peanut, peanut oil or something. I think that's more of an American thing because like I've noticed like there's a bunch of brands popping up now over like in the liquor stores where it's like different brands are selling peanut butter whiskey. I don't know why. I've never heard of it. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So and I had Fireball because oh. I. I yes. went, we didn't have any alcohol ever. And so I I went to the liquor store and got a whole bunch of just little bottles of different, just for the show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> good, good. Gold, did you drink anything? Uh, I, I had Baron Jaeger. Oh, okay. Baron Jaeger, okay. There you go. What is All that? Right. Is that pear, pear Jaeger? Or... No, honey. Baron Jaeger, it's, it's like honey Jaeger. Mm -hmm. Ah, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Never heard of it. No. It's, little, it's like thick, it's like Jaegermeister, but tastes like honey. Oh, nice. Thanks. I, I like had never had it before until Tom's girlfriend uh, one night. It's <laughs> just giving it to everybody. <laughs> so no, at the Solar Fake Show. We, at the Solar uh, Fake Show, yeah. Sammy has been kind enough all month to uh, Fate. What, 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 what do we call it? Fate Tober? I call it Fate Tober or Sammy to or <laughs> Sammy Ween. I like that Sam, one. Sammy Ween. That was a good Sammy, one. Oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. That's a really good. Kind of goes into the like Sam Hain, small, Sammy Ween. Very small. So, so we played Halloween <laughs> Spooky Queens uh, twice this month. Uh, we played the 2022 version to start off the month. We played the 2021 version um, two shows ago. And uh, he gave away some shirts, which was very kind of you. Thank you very much. We did get winners for the shirts. Now, and we had I still a... haven't gotten, uh, uh, like, emailed them, which I will do w very soon. But my girlfriend just moved in. Oh, so basically, okay. the last few weeks has just been a lot of like domestic stuff. So I, I will imagine. get to that 
I promise I just haven't been, uh, you know, spending much time on the computer. No, no, all good. We appreciate Mark just that. moved too. Moving is yeah, a thing. Mo it's mo a big moving, deal. moving can yeah. be crazy. Yeah. Did you yeah. did you There's announce the winners? Did we the winners did announce winners uh, for the shirts. Yes, okay. uh, that was uh, two two week, two weeks ago. So now we had a contest last week that Sammy um, offered, and I screwed up the way it sounded. I probably probably nobody understood a single thing I said. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to let Sammy explain it to you, and please participate because we don't give away too many we don't have too many contests on coming after dark so when we do have contests we fuck it up in proper yeah and that but no but your participation is needed <laughs> in order for contests to actually happen yeah so i mean uh let's you know because hey maybe we'll give away some more stuff in the future maybe we'll give away some cad merchandise in the future but you have to participate in order for that to actually happen so sammy uh you want to go ahead and explain uh what you're doing Okay, yeah, what, what I'm doing, what I've been doing for years now on my Patreon is that I stream when I produce music in the studio, which means um, the people who are subscribed to that, they, they basically see my full computer screen with the, with the software that I'm using. They, see, they also see me in the, in the corner like, like this now. And there's also a chat window, um, obviously, of the people who watch the live stream. And then the theme could be anything, but this time I streamed when uh, I was doing the 2022 version of Halloween Spooky Queens. So basically, if uh, someone is interested in music production or just interested in seeing how a song is made in general, um, they can get, um, I think it's three hours and 20 minutes or something like that of from nothing, probably to the 70, 80% finished song um the whole progression uh they can get that uh what if they what, what are they supposed to do they have to well comment. We, we had it we had it where you they were going to go to the actual video which is right, on youtube yes. and yes. say yes i want it that's all yes. you have to say yes i exactly. want exactly right yes yeah. i remember <laughs> so yeah and yes then, i want um, it yes that's it so participate you you can see the stream we are going to pick three winners we'll we'll do that next week because we're yeah. going to give you another week to actually participate since sammy actually made more sense than i did last week because i mean whatever i said probably went in one ear and out the other ear uh we did have one person who already actually uh somehow caught on to what i said and, and commented so um yeah please uh, do that and then we will pick winners next week and we'll announce them and then we'll send them to um sammy so he can provide that and by the way you might as well go ahead because i know your patreon uh gold has has um has um subscribed to it i i was um subscribed to it as well uh so um if you want to give that information where your patreon is available for people oh, in case uh, they want to check it, it out it's very simple it's patreon.com slash faderhead and um what can i say there's like obviously different tiers sure. um I'm not, I can't say if I'm super active compared to others. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's definitely like a song a month, which is a lot for for most musicians. Sure. Um, and I think I've been, what do you call that? Uh, um, Jesus, my, my English doesn't work today. Uh, consistent. I've been consistent with that for, I think, four years now. Um, so there's a lot of stuff, even if you just get there, go there once. You can basically listen to all of it and download all of it from the last four and a half or something years. Wow. Um, okay. The same goes for the for the streams. So if if you go on the tier where you can uh, stream studio streams, you can watch literally all of them uh, for the last I don't know how many months. Nice. Um, nice. There's a, a weekly newsletter which some people find <laughs> a little long because uh, <laughs> it's sometimes it's like five pages or something like that every week. Um, a lot of people like it. It's very hmm, philosophical sometimes, but because I see things in real life and then I comment on them. That's in my awesome. Very, how do you call cool. that? In my very um, naive way of seeing things because I'm not a person who's really into culture, like all the TV news and all that stuff. Sure. So, so sometimes it, I, I find myself to be naive, but I do it because apparently people are very interested in it and also because i use it to reflect on things and sometimes uh when i finish writing it i know better what i think about a certain situation or about mm -hmm. like something that i saw a different band doing i 
after I write the newsletter, I know more what I think than um, before I start writing the newsletter. And that's what I use it for personally, mm -hmm. but apparently a lot of people enjoy it. Good. That's awesome. I still think right. you should have did a coffee book. Uh, coffee table book. <laughs> coffee table book. Yeah. Tom, you know that I did a book about, uh, out of this, right? Did, did, did you did that already come out? I remember when you were talking about it. I don't know if that ever finalized or not. I think I did it to 2000. When was that? 17 or something like that? Yeah, because um, you're like, I'm thinking about doing a, a coffee book about this. And, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I just <laughs> took nice. the first 150 uh, newsletters and took the most interesting, I think, 50 or 60 uh, uh, essays and put them in three. Uh, areas like, like not three areas three what do you call that chapters sort of chapters but it's sort more like chapters, yeah. more like more like blocks because each chapter would have then 20 essays or something so chapter might not be the right thing it would be about creativity attitude and music business those were the big blocks oh, okay and then each block had uh, each block of those had maybe 20 or 15 essays about different topics nice so nice maybe i should do a second one now there you go yeah you could probably, yeah, sure. So, all right, well, we're going to talk more to Sammy. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Gold's going to be next. So come back for more music. And, um, yeah, we'll talk more after the break. Come back for music. This is Beauty After Dark Radio, and you are listening to DJ Gold. Energiezufuhr, Tapes, alles klar. Alles ist im Klar. Bereit. Einschalten. Einschalten. Alles bereit. Alles bereit. Zeit, 
Fehler eingestellt auf Gegenwart. Alles klar, Dave. Bereit zur Zeitsynchronisation. Alles bereit.
Ich habe nur einen Herrn und Gebieter, Dr. Mabuse. Ich habe nur einen Herrn und Gebieter, Dr. Mabuse. Ich habe nur einen Herrn und Gebieter, Dr. Mabuse. Ich habe nur einen Herrn und Gebieter, Dr. Mabuse. Ich habe nur einen Herrn und Gebieter, Dr. Mabuse. Ich habe nur einen Herrn und Gebieter, Dr. Mabuse. Ich habe nur einen Herrn und Gebieter.
Welcome back to Communion After Dark. I'm DJ Tom, and you just heard brand new Cell Mod right here from Florida with a song called Drunk Robots Win Wars, and that's the De Roboter remix from his new Humans Reprogrammed remix album. That's available on Bandcamp. Prior to that, we heard the legendary noise unit is back from Vancouver uh, with a song called Still Alive from Philippe's new release called Chiba City Blues out on Artifact Records. Chiba City Blues. Interesting yep. name. Here I might have I might I might have Sammy read this whole this whole selection here. <laughs> you know, yeah. teach me, but perfect. I think it's do- I think it's Dr. B- Babuse. Doc- I don't know. Dr. That's a, that's a name. The Germans yeah. say Dr. Mabuse, but I don't know if Mabuse, that's yeah. Even, yeah, even he's correct. Little, I don't yeah, know. he says that in the song a couple times so yeah. Ah, right, Mabuse. Yeah. So it's so it's Vela Erdball. Vele Atba, yes. Vele Atba. Dr. Mabuse from Film, Funk, and Fern... Was it Ferns? Fernsehen? Fernsehen. Fernsehen, yes. Fernsehen. Very good. Fernsehen. Very good. Nice. And that's right. uh, kind of a big label, so you get that out on Apple Tunes if you're looking. And before that, you heard Tom play brand new Black Car Burning, The Grace of Heavy Lifting, and that was featuring Mary Catlin that was on the show last week, and we talked about it. And that is on Divide Us on Cop International. The, all right, so Black Car Burning is Mark Hawking's uh, new project of Mesh. Uh, he's been putting out uh, EPs um, under that name now for uh, quite a while, actually, a couple of years. But he's, he's had three releases this year, I believe now. I believe it's three on Cop. So, yeah, I mean, no new Mesh yet. But I heard Mari or Mary told us last week when she came on the show that there is new Mesh coming out very soon. Uh, so in the meantime, though, you can check out Black Car Burning and hear his uh, stuff that he's been doing under that project. Uh, the third song in uh, Gold Set was by Mental Discipline. Uh, Mental Discipline has a brand new e- album out. And the song though, that you heard was called Resistance. Uh, that was featuring Beyond Border on vocals for that track and that's a really good um if you like synth pop or just melodic ebm excellent excellent song um the uh, album is called nothing to die for and that's on sky code right the second track you heard was from a band called reich find reich find almost reich find reich find second that mix with fine flug and fiend. yeah, yeah. And, fine and means the- enemy and it's basically yeah, enemy fl- or enemy flight. I think it's fine. If flu. you read that, just think you're saying fine, and then you add a D at the end. Find. Fine. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. All right, that makes sense. All right, makes that easy. And the song is called this, and I guess that's the the, the doc remix or the VDOC remix, and that's from the this EP out on Alpha Matrix, and started off with brand new Urban Matrix from Germany with a song called Alice Barrett. Barrett. Alles right? bereit. Bright. Alles bereit. Alles bereit. And that's from new release, of self-titled, from Brutal, Re- uh, was that Renaissance? A Reso- Resonance. Was Resonance? Yeah. I, I Resonance. Was I know, that's new to me. If that's, that's how they were, you spell the yeah, Brutal, yeah, brutal th- Resonance. Uh, yeah, records. I thought they were strictly on Bandcamp, but they got a label, I guess, for that one. I huh? researched that one. And their last label was um, 2022, and it was mm-hmm. Brutal yeah. Resonance Records, because you know these, sometimes they'll release something and they don't attach the label to it, so we have to dig. Yeah, the, I mean yeah. these guys are pretty consistent putting out new stuff. <laughs> All right, Gold, good set. All right, Sammy's got a set coming up next, but we're gonna ask uh, Gold's got some questions. I'm I'm guessing to ask him, so we'll go ahead and go to questions, and then we'll come come back for more music. So, what is your uh, earliest music influences that you can remember? Um. That would be uh, USA for Africa, Heal the World. Um, that would also be Pet Shop Boys, It's a Sin. And maybe, uh, no, it wasn't No Sleep Till Brooklyn. It was another one by the Beastie Boys. Rhyming and Stealing by the Beastie Rhyming Boys. Rhyming and Stealing. Um, that was, the. I think I had a cassette when I was, I don't know seven or nine years old of this and i mean this was way back in the 80s so you didn't start listening to music at five 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 eight years no. old or something no. you just had 
whatever was around that your parents had or someone sure. else had. So, uh, Pet that Shop was Boys, that's a great remember. one. I love Pet is it, Shop it Boys. Is, I'm a big, 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 big Pet Shop Boys fan. Very, really? Very oh, big. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so am I. Yeah. Wow, all right. That if you cool. listen to the like the early Faderhead records, when I really had no business singing at all, I go a lot of, <laughs> and that's like my Neil Tennant <laughs> That's awesome. Because that's he awesome. was very nasal and thin with his voice usually. Yeah, so no, that's, that's awesome. Neat. That's fantastic. All right, I, go ahead. Go I know on. when they, I know when they put out new stuff. I mean, they, they always request like a lot of remixers. You should try to get in on that. I, they're no still around. I, 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 oh yeah, they've been putting out. Oh, they put yeah. Out a, yeah, they really? put out. A, they put out a new album almost every other year now. Oh, okay. They're yeah. very go consistent. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, the crazy yeah, part about their latest one was. Boys, they're such a consistent band. Yeah, for sure. For one of the eighty ba- '80s bands, they still produce. You know. Yeah, and they change up their style too, which is pretty. Uh, which is nice. You know, it's not always the same thing. So let me. Anyways, actually, uh, let's move. We don't want to turn yeah. this into Pet Shop Boys TV. So no, we actually. Make a note here. If I don't make a note, I'll forget. Yeah, you. I think you might actually really enjoy some, especially some of the newer, uh, like like about two or three albums ago. There was one that came out that was just fantastic. Um, but they've they their new stuff is good, no doubt. Go ahead, go. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, I don't want to interrupt yeah. you. And then, um, ooh, out of uh, out of your new material, uh, you're a serpent. What, what's your new favorite song to play on stage when you're live set? Years of the Serpent, we only play two and a half songs. So basically, we we only play All Black Everything, um, Too Dead for Life, which is are the first two singles. And then sometimes we play uh, My Stone Heart and mm-hmm. All Black Everything by far uh, my favorite off, yeah. off of the new album. But it's, I mean, there's, I don't know, 13 songs and we only play two and a half of those. So it's... Uh, it's not that much of a, a choice, basically. <laughs> is there is there a reason like um like you chose like I mean because I know a lot of artists do that they'll put out like new albums but they don't won't like when you see them live they don't play too many of the uh, new tracks. I mean every once in a while you'll run to an artist who will play like the majority of their new album, but I know then the fans will be like whining during the concert, you know, because I think me and Tom saw some band recently where. Uh, I don't know what band it was. Oh, we went and saw. Uh, that's right, Tears for Fears, and mm-hmm. uh, and and of course they have a new album out. A couple uh, it was co- uh, came out like early like this year, and um, and you know and they played a bunch of new songs, a bunch of new songs in between all their hits. But yeah, anytime they they went into like this whole like long set of new songs, if fans in the crowd are like, bleh, bleh, turn you know where's the you know when when are you gonna play the hits you know and it's like. <laughs> You know, so, I mean, but I mean, the new album was fantastic, but but people is, is there I mean, is that like more of a reason like artists do that or is there just other reasons or is it, or is it just for time purposes? Well, the thing is, I don't think bands should play longer than 90 minutes. OK, um, mm-hmm. so I have 11 albums and I don't know how many EPs. Yes. So if I just play one song off of each no two songs off of each album there's almost 90 minutes okay oh, that makes and sense then you have to definitely play the hits and then you have to play this and this and this and um we also didn't play many headline shows this year because all the uh covid stuff basically put shows very far spread them out very far apart and it was you know the typical mess that everyone has been uh, living through the last two and a half years. Sure, sure. So mostly it was festival sets, and those are forty to sixty minutes. Yeah. So uh, what are you gonna okay. play in forty minutes? No, um, you're right. You're right. I never thought about it. like you just put it, and, and and you know, I mean the 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 way you just like framed everything, and yeah, it, it makes more sense, of course, because yes, you're right. You have to play your hits that the crowd wants to hear, and then how many more songs can you really fit in, depending on how long the set is. So yeah, that makes sense. I was just curious because. Um, you know, like I said, when it seems like when you go to a show, if, if, if bands start playing like everything that's brand new, people start losing their minds for some reason. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially if it's a band like you, like you, like who's been around for a long time and you've already, like you said, you've already released 11, uh, full lengths. That's a, that's a large amount. Uh, you know, and you true. also have to, you have to remember that even if the club is only full of people that came for you, 
mm -hmm. maybe 50% will not have heard the new album. Sure. So if you play seven songs off of the new album, they'll be like, ah, that's kind of nice, but I would like to hear something yes. that I already know. Yes. And um, when we play headline shows, which is 90 minute sets, that's, yep. um, there, that's when we play three songs. And okay. three songs compared to all the other albums is actually a majority. Sure. Because all the other albums get maybe two songs. Some of them don't even get one. Like this, I think the second album, FH2, maybe we play Houston, but only rarely. Yeah. So three, three is more than enough, I think. That makes sense. No, it makes sense. All right, great. Well, Sammy's got a set coming up now, a DJ set. So we're going to go and uh, hear what he's got to play. Mm -hmm. so come back for his music and then he'll uh, mention it and we'll uh, talk a little bit more. Communion After Dark.
I'm Faderhead, and you are listening and watching uh, Communion After Dark. And this was my guest DJ set. And um, the last song you heard was by Suppressor. Um, the song's called A Man Called Rorschach. I think that's how you pronounce it. In English, you'd probably say Rorschach or something like that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> like the Rorschach Which is test. these little, like, ink thingies, right? Uh, they not... are, yes. Yeah, those little ink tests, yes. Mm -hmm. um, that's a song I just randomly heard of when some of my keyboard players played it one night, and I really liked it, so I decided to um, include it in my set. The sixth song, or like the, the, the song before that, was Mechanical Vein, All Gods Fall Down, and that was the Sardonic remix. Um, Mechanical Vein, I did, um, what did I do? I did guest vocals for them maybe That's a year right. and a half ago. I'm not sure, that. but like a little while ago. Yes. And we played with Sardonic in Russia once, so I know him briefly from, from a show. He's a really cool guy doing a lot of like drum and bassy uh, stuff. Maybe it's probably called something different, but for me, it's drum and bass. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like that song. Um, the fifth song was ES23, which is a German band. Mm -hmm. and it's called Not Your Enemy. Um, what else was there? Oh, before that was uh, Torul, um, called Mad World, which is a cover uh, of, I don't know who made this. Who made the original Mad World? It oh, was, that was actually Donnie It's Darko. funny. That, that was actually uh, Tears for Fears. We were just mm -hmm. discussing. Yeah. We were just at Mad World was Tears yep, for Fears. That was yeah. Tears for Fears. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I only know it from the Donnie Darko movie, so oh, okay. I, I didn't know. Yeah, no, yeah, Tears for Fears did the original. Oh, cool. I didn't know. The The interesting thing is, um, this was the Ro Rob Dust remix of this cover version. And the the funny thing is, I met Rob Dust for the first time three weeks ago wow. at the oh, wow. Atropolis Festival, randomly, because he was playing with... Who was he playing with? I don't remember. Well, what's, his, what's the band he's in? Uh, I, I don't know if he's in that band. Form. Um, Form. Vengeance. He was in Vengeance. Oh, oh, oh Van or Vanguard. Vanguard. Okay. Vanguard. Vanguard. Yes. Vanguard. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, Vanguard. sorry. Vanguard. Right. Yes. Okay. And I never met them before, but um, they had the room that was our backstage room. They had them before we were supposed to get there, but we mm. got there much early. Like if if the venue doesn't have enough rooms, they just split the rooms so that the bands that play very early they get the room till maybe four in the afternoon, and then. They get cleaned and then you switch and you come the later oh, bands okay. take, take the room and um we were much earlier than we were supposed to be so we just shared the room for the rest of the day so i met, met uh rob dust and he was really cool so we hung out a little and um later i started listening to some of the stuff he he had done and among the, those were this this remix and so i decided to include it oh, yeah. um also he because i like mad world as a song He's a great remixer. He, he's on my bucket list to meet one day. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Yes, he is. What else was there? Uh, third song was Matteo Tura. I think that's where, how you pronounce it. Uh, uh, with Biomechanimal, um, Corrupt. Uh, I know Matt from Biomechanimal from the internet. And I think we're meeting for the first time in two weeks uh, because there's Helsinki Industrial Fest in, in Helsinki mm -hmm. in Finland. Um, we just... Uh, DM'd this morning, and I, I love his stuff. He's uh, he's young, he's energetic, and uh, he's a cool guy. So I decided to uh, uh, incorporate <laughs> this this uh, corrupt cool. song into the mix. What else was there before that? Number two, Black Boots. This shit will fuck you up. Ode to Combi Christ. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if this is an official remix or if this this just like someone just took the the sample or. If, if there's any involvement, but I love it, and so I, I, I never heard I, I, that. That's and, awesome. Andy, Andy actually like touted it that he liked it. So, oh, perfect. Yeah, so oh. it's it's a, it's a good, it's a crazy mix of that. Um, it it takes a song that's really good and makes it modern for 2022 or whenever this came out, like the last last uh, few months. Um, and the first one was uh, Swarm, another brick in the wall. Uh, which is obviously uh, yeah. Pink Floyd, um, and for some reason, oh, because you asked me uh, like very, very earliest uh, influences, that was also one of them. Uh, another brick in the wall. 
Um, I haven't actually heard that song actively in probably 20 years, but uh, for some reason this came onto my radar a while ago and uh, I really liked it. Cool. Well, thank you for the DJ set. Thank You're you. welcome. Yeah, it's, uh, we always enjoy hearing other people's DJ sets on the show and what they are enjoying or what they're listening to. Um, so, before uh, we go to the last set of our show, which will be Winter's sh uh, set, um, I did want to ask you, now, like you said, you have one, two, three, four, you, like you said, 11 albums out now, uh, full length. That's not including all your singles, uh, EPs, and then, like you mentioned, all the stuff you release on Patreon, you, you have so much music, you know, so um, there's also a, um, it looks like there was like a theme, obviously, to start off. I can't, I, and I'm amazed that your first album came out in 2006 on Session Records. Um, it just seems like it wasn't that long ago, but obviously <laughs> time, time goes flies. fast. Yeah, yeah, time goes fast. Uh, so you started off with FH1, FH2, FH3. Um, you've done FH4. You had FH, uh, I believe, uh, X. X, yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, uh, so, um, I mean, I, you, it seems like you have themes going on with your album titles, because like with the most recent ones, you've got the Night Physics, and then uh, I believe here you've got Asteria and yeah. Years of the Serpent. Um, so is there like a theme that you're usually going with, like for a certain amount of time or, or any ideas that you usually like, are because it does seem like you have a theme going on with your album titles usually. Well, in the, in the beginning, it was just that I had no idea what to call my album. So oh. I, I, I don't remember. I really don't remember how I came up with FH1. I don't have, but once it was FH1 and I still had no idea what to call the second album, I was like, ah, FH2. And then I had to do FH3 <laughs> just to make it three because, you know, there two you just not enough. Mm. And um, but then you broke after... it up between FH4. You had the Black Friday and yes. the... Yeah, in the in the world of um, a fader head in between that. The thing is, you can look at all the albums, and anytime I had a unifying idea, mm -hmm. then the album is not called FH something. So gotcha. basically, FH are always the albums that have no theme, but they're just songs. And for instance, Black Friday was the the whole story about this lady just going out and her whole evening going bad, and. Um, then World of Faderhead was just uh, um, songs about things that were personal to me. Okay. Um, and we for that one we did a lot of like external stuff with uh, 360 degree videos from locations that were also particular to me, like the bar that I would always go to, the studio that I was working in, like a hotel on the road and stuff like that. We also did the music videos for that. Um, and that's why the cover has my head open with like a, a city in it because oh, those nice. were songs about my inner uh, inner states at that point. Um, FH4 again was one where I didn't have a theme, so I called it FH4. Um, I don't even know what was next. Was it FHX? And that was probably because it was 10 years of Faderhead because that's why X is Latin for 10. We had, um, you had Adams and uh, Emptiness. Right, yes, that was, oh, right, 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 yes. I had mm -hmm. broken up with my fiancé before, and I really was very, very, very not happy and not into making music. And after that, I took like an hour and a, not an hour and a half, a year and a half break. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, just I like went that. to the gas station, bought some smoke, <laughs> and made another album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, no, a year and a half. Okay. So, yeah, every time there's an actual title, there's a theme to answer right. your question. And, uh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. And then, um, so I want to ask now, like with your music, I mean, you you really have diversified your music depending on the uh, releases. I mean, you start off with a large amount of club music. Um, I know you're very well known for the Tans Void, whatever. I, I know I can't, I don't even want to screw it up because I'm going to say it in German and then it's going to yeah. be all screwed up. Tans Void, Dry Fear. Is that's that how pretty you, good. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Right. So I know that's what you're, you know, but I mean, but your music, like you, you've proven, I think over the years, depending on your releases and what songs you're putting out, you're, you, you diversify a large amount. You have had ballads, you've had uh, more mid-tempo tracks, uh, deep bass, you know, um, it just depends. I mean, but uh, one thing that stands out is your vocals are very, um, 
forefront, you know, on on your releases. Um, and I think you they they like you mentioned you weren't singing maybe when as well when you first started, but you it, it, your your voice is very prominent now, and it's it's very recognizable. I feel um, so. I mean, like, do you just you know uh, not have like one style? Your you know when you put out your albums. It just depends on your what your your thought process at that time, or where you are at that time, as far as what the the sounds are going to be. Because I'm sure you don't want to just put out the same music, obviously, each time for uh, you know each release. Yeah, the thing the thing for me is I started Faderhead uh, basically uh, uh, by accident, and but I've been a musician for my whole life since oh, I was okay. 13. So I played in metal bands. I, I used to be a rather good guitar player. Now, not anymore, but um, I started that, I think maybe almost 20 years before Fader hit. So um, I will be making music 40 years from now, That's if amazing. I can. Yeah. So for me, the point was never to just make three albums of the same stuff. Sure. But to do whatever I wanted to do so when I'm 70, I can look back on 100 albums and be like, I'm happy with what I made, even though maybe I can't relate to it anymore, but I can look at it and no matter what, I didn't bore myself by making it. If I would just, I don't know, the first hit I had was Dirty Girls, Dirty Boys. Yeah, I would have done Dirty Girls, Dirty Boys over and over for 15 years. I would have killed myself because I mean, it was that. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, um, we, and, yeah, and we played like, like, because I mean, I DJ, I, I don't DJ anymore, but I DJ for 21 years in the club uh, with Tom. Tom still is, uh, um, Tom's uh, still there. Tom still does it somehow <laughs> every single weekend. Uh, and you know, and, and you know, we've had some songs of yours that were played like, um, you know, like a large amount. That was one of them. Uh, the one that we mentioned earlier, obviously, was one of them. There was a few others. Um, Gold, what were the other ones that you've played a large amount that, um, you know, Sammy has put out? Because, I mean, there's a handful. I mean, there's not just two or three. Yeah, um, well, I mean, right in rotation now that I'm doing uh, Dark Water and uh, No Joy. Mm -hmm. and, oh, No uh, Joy, really? Oh, cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because yeah. I'll, I'll, that'll, that'll be, like, between, like, maybe, like, one and two when it's hitting really hard. Yeah. And then... um. um Oh, some of the other ones. I don't remember the song titles. I'm really bad right today. <laughs> Hang on, just give me a break. Um, don't worry. Yeah, we can. But you know, it. but what I mean, we do. We'd always spin something, you know, for a couple well, months well, from each release. We we played your music on this show, believe it or not. Um, it, it, somebody had done it. I think I don't know if we said this on the last. The mad we, scientist. Two, two, yeah, we had. Yeah. The, yeah, we had. We have a listener who actually somehow calculated all the years that we've been doing this podcast and all the yeah. songs that we played in the bands and yours was one of the top bands that we played on the uh podcast mm -hmm. of the years Thank just you. because I mean, well, no it's your, your music i mean you've got some great tracks that you've released and every album has got something that i think uh is 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 worth listening to and there's more than one track on every album so don't get me wrong it's not I mean, just one song but i mean no i still have spend know your darkness and halo yeah. Yeah, dancers was a great track too dancers yeah out on um did, did that uh, work FH4. for you did, did dances work in, in florida yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. because, and, then, and then, at, then at the time we had dancers in the club too so we yeah. played that while we had dancers on podiums <laughs> yeah. yeah and they were yeah. up there yeah in yep, germany it didn't work at all because um people didn't recognize it as a faderhead track because it has sean mires on vocals and shaolin the the female yeah. voice yeah. and german like industrial goth audiences they are very conservative so oh, if yeah. they don't know the the track they just leave the dance floor and for that one that's what that's what happened yeah like, no, berlin, that berlin was my hardest it. crowd ever to dj to berlin's like a <laughs> tough crowd i mean leipzig's great because everybody wants to hear something new you know yeah 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 but no no it was uh yeah that one went over really well electro sluts extraordinaire uh, there <laughs> that's uh, an old coke, one, uh, yeah. coke, coke, coke for my ass oh yeah Ooh, nice. yeah we yeah, used yeah, to sorry. play that all the time yeah, yeah. yeah. oh and then and then then, then I played um, this. Uh, not many people know about this, but your version of um, "Sexy Back" that you did for our friend. Oh Amber. right, yes, yes, yes. Or, or you, we did that. You know, I still got a copy of that somewhere. We play that live sometimes. If the yeah. audience is really cool, like if they're sometimes you, you have audiences that where you see people are into the 
not so popular songs and they know all the lyrics and then you can really get away with something like that because yeah the people you throw are a loop in it. of something yeah you can just yeah. throw a loop of some yeah. other song in and wait, well i you just know, think shake, shake everybody up i just think you should be so proud man 11 years uh, i mean 11 albums i mean you've been doing this music now for well over well i know you say you've been a musician for your for the majority of your life but i mean you've been doing Faderhead <clears throat> now for like going on 17 years i mean yeah. so 17 18 years whatever it may be uh so that's uh yeah it's pretty impressive and all the stuff you've accomplished um I still want to get to see you live one of these days. I know Gold got to see you live a number of years ago in uh, in Germany. I wasn't there for that year, yeah, WGT. but um, um, I would love to get a chance one of these days to get to see you live. Or have you come over to the yeah, U.S. Come, to come to Tampa. Yeah, come play for us in Tampa. And, uh, here. Uh, I'm actually uh, contemplating retiring from playing live. So Really? Yeah, you just really? yeah. thinking about just being yeah. more of like a nope. studio musician? The, the thing is... I used to be drunk on stage and okay. just, you know, wing it. Yeah. And I think in 2016 or 17, I decided to try to be like a better uh, live performer. Sure. And that that came with a lot of work, which is fine, but it also came with, hmm, how do you say this? The whole production got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and yes. something always fucks up. And the amount of preparation and, and work that has been going into it in the last few years is so much that the hmm, that it, with the fact that I don't drink anymore, um, yes, and that I mean for Americans it's not a lot, but I don't want to drive 16 hours anymore. It's it's just no fun. I understand. Um, I, don't no. You don't have to. Yeah, and and I can so, see. So it's just like the whole from. package of lots of responsibility, yes. and I've done it for thirty years. Yep. So, I, and, and you know, I've, like I told you earlier, I mean, this is not on your level, but I DJed for twenty one years in a yeah. club, and I, I don't have any interest in it anymore. It does yeah. not interest me. The the idea of going out and being out till three o'clock in the morning, and having yes. to worry about driving home at three o'clock in the morning does not does not interest me in the slightest bit anymore so yeah. i mean life changes life changes yeah. for everybody i mean it just it's just part of life i mean you know and then uh you know so yeah no i mean it's it makes sense but that's like i said i can understand where you're coming from but um let's go to the last set so we can ask you a few more questions okay. winters is going to play her music and then um winters will talk after that but let's hear music <laughs>
Welcome back to Community After Dark. You just heard Golf Boulevard with Nightwolf doing Operations. That is the Operation single that is self-released. And Golf Boulevard will be opening for Alice with Obsidian on the 2nd here in Tampa at Hooch and Hive, where I will be teaching. So come see us. Um, I'll be there. The fifth track in my set was brand new Psychic Guilt, uh, the full album. I did play another track a couple weeks ago. That was the pre-order. The album's now released. I played the song Werewolf, and that is off the Midheaven album that is self-released. They are out of Portland, Oregon. Okay. Good job. Fourth track in Winter So is by a great band called I Am The Shadow from Portugal. The song you heard was The Killing. That is on their brand new album, The Wide Starlight. And that is on Cold Transmission Music. So, yeah, excellent album. If you're into uh, the post-punk, goth, dark wave sound, it's a fantastic release. All right. And the third track you heard was by Alex Syndrome from France. And the song was called Faith in Reverse featuring Dawn Blackbird. And that's on the Eject album. Out on, And that's a pre-order coming out November 22nd, self-released on Bandcamp. And the second song in my trap, track was Brand New Amulet, and that was House of Black and White. That's the Grindle remix, and that is on the upcoming album Perfect Fusion. Uh, that'll release on the 28th of October on Distortion Productions. And I started everything off with Brand New Ego Error out of Russia, and that was Unrequited Love. That is the Unrequited Love single that is on RDC Records. All right. Awesome. Well, good job, Winters. Go ahead if you have some questions. I, I, I do, but you a... kept talking and you kind of asked him more than two questions. Oh, and then he kind of like <laughs> answered a little bit of what I was going to ask. Go ahead. Um, so basically, I was going to ask what got you, what, what was the click in your head that was like, I want to make music? Like going back, you said that you were always in yeah. bands. Like there's no, people I, that I'm have trying, no I'm interest actually, in it. Yeah, and then like, there's people that are like, click, I have to make music. Yes, I, I was one of those. Um, I'm trying to think what it was though. Um, at some point I just started listening to metal, um, which like at that point was bands like uh, uh, Megadeth and Slayer. So um, Rust in Peace, South of Heaven, these, these records. And I started, I started badgering my mom if I could get a guitar, um, uh, much to her dismay. Now she bought me one for, I don't know, Christmas or something like that. And I, I probably think like the first day I had a guitar with like a little tiny practice amp, uh, that's when I knew. And um, that has never changed. And uh, at this point, I think I'm completely unemployable and uh, it's a f completely impossible for me to work in a regular job because if you do what you want to do for so long, then I don't know, going back is very difficult. Yeah. yeah. And then you said that Faderhead was kind of an accident. Um, so yeah. where did the name come from? Oh, the name existed before. Um, uh, mm. I think it started in 1996 or 97. I was uh producing a german uh new metal band they kind of sounded like i don't know uh, uh what's the band that max cavalera was in after sepultura oh, oh, my, oh. my husband would answer that i i don't know <laughs> one of these sludgy new metal bands um so mr horg Hor guys no you no from somewhere it, no it was called uh jesus flies soul flies um so uh they sounded kind of like that. And I was mixing their um, EP CD or something because they recorded at my place. And their uh, drummer was American. And he, he he was, I don't know, just sitting there while I, I was mixing it. I really didn't know very well what I was doing. So I was very slow. So I was, I was sitting in front of my big mixing board, just moving faders up and down. And he leaves because he gets so bored. And five hours later, he comes back and he's like, you're still at it, man. You're a real fader head, aren't you? And oh, everyone wow. laughed, including me. And I thought, that's a cool name. Yeah. Everyone instantly picked up on it and started calling me that in, in the studio. And I used the name for my like little 
graphic art that I did in early 2000s and stuff like that. So that name was around much longer than than the, the wow. music. Wow, in your project, that's, that's, yeah. That's that's funny that you mentioned Soulfly. Um, my friend jo Joseph, he's only been in Soulfly for four four years, but he's an ex-Light guy that worked at the Castle. Ah, and he, he plays <laughs> he's, in Soulfly he's, now. He's, yeah, he's the bass player now. Ah, oh, cool, nice. It's yeah. a good band. Yeah. All right, and uh, well, we did have one last question before I know sure. you. I know you have to get going here soon. Um, we wanted to ask, uh, what was what, what's next for Faderhead? Uh, do you have uh, any like releases on the music. horizon? <laughs> music, <laughs> music. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I, as I said, I'm probably not going to play much live next year. Sure. Um, and on the flip side, that means I will put out probably more music. Um, I also want to start doing uh, little side projects here and there just because it's more interesting if I'm not the singer. Stuff mm -hmm. immediately changes um, because uh, all my stuff kind of sounds like Faderhead, even if the music sounds very different because my sure. voice, I have like a little nasally type of, uh, I don't know, style, vocal style. So it's very easy to recognize the song once I start singing. So it's nice to have someone else sing over the music so it immediately doesn't sound like me anymore. And that's that's what I want to look at. And for Faderhead, I think I'm going to put something out. Right now, the, the idea is to make a, the Walking Dead EP because they're going to bring the, I think it's called Dark City, where Negan and Maggie uh, go to New York or something okay. like that. So it's like the urban version. Uh, of of Walking Dead in New York, and I think it comes out in April, and I really like the 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 idea behind that. And I did the Cyberpunk EP uh, mm -hmm. when the game came out, so I think I want to do that because nice. it's a very simple theme, and I haven't done any of zombie splatter thingies in my my uh, past before. So, so I, do I, you I'm, do I'm, like? I'm, uh, go ahead, go ahead, gold. I was gonna say I was like I was I'm excited about your uh, diorama remix coming out. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, 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 let me send you that once we're done. Oh, wow. Oh, that'd be awesome. That would be oh, great. Of course. Of course. I think you can't play it yet, but I don't no, know. No, no, I won't play it. It's just something to listen to or yeah, check definitely. it out. You can play it yeah. in the club. Yeah, there you oh, go. That'd yeah, be awesome. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Gold can play it for sure. All right. So, and then, um, so do you produce music and master music um, for other artists or, or is it just. I produce for other artists. I don't master for other artists usually okay. simply because I don't want the client relationship. Gotcha. So um, if if it was something else that wasn't subjective, uh, if I was selling you widgets or whatever, <laughs> yeah. bottles of beer, that would be fine. I, I would be fine with clients, but I have such a strong opinion on, on music. Yes. that I don't want to discuss someone else who decided to hire me, decided to pay me, but then he needs to, he or she needs to discuss the idea uh, for hours and hours and hours later. That's not my my way of working. So well, hey, at least you know that, you know. And that's good. I know that very well. Yeah, yeah, so. that's awesome. I mean, you know, knowing yourself is important. I think that's very important. So that's good. And I know you. I know, like, um, like with with like some of your posts and stuff, you'll. You, you know, people may almost take them as like controversial sometimes, but you're being honest and you're putting out what you think. And, and I like that because, I mean, you're you're giving your opinions on what you feel. And um, so I, I like that about like your like I know you made a post recently about industrial music and, 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 and how it should be. And, and maybe what did you miss in the post? But, yeah, I, I, I thought that was cool, you know, I mean, because you're like. You know, you're you're saying what you think, and and I I think that's important. I don't think there's enough of that nowadays. So yeah, and I like your I like your view about how not enough new new music's played in clubs. And, well, yes, you know, I have that. I know, that, that that's, 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 yeah, that's the you know, everything <laughs> everything was new once. You know, the, the interesting thing, uh, Mark, about this uh, this I think it was a tweet that I did about industrial 101 or something. Right. Like that. Yes, that's what it was. Yes. Uh, the interesting thing is, um, most people agreed. Some people found it really offensive or whatever <laughs> and then you, you you'd have like people like daniel graves or eskil from covenant and some other musicians be like that was me to 10 yeah. years ago that That's was exactly awesome. me 15 years ago so um I, I didn't mean it in any way either negative or positive I, it was just an observation because i was looking at 
uh, Berlin techno kids from two years ago, and they look okay. exactly like industrial goths 1999 to 2004. Yes. They wear exactly the same clothes. The so songs are a little more heavy and more modern, but otherwise they sound like Grendel 2003, uh, stuff like that. But they don't know because they're 19. And they're yeah. too young to know that it's been around. And that was my thinking when I wrote the thing. It had nothing to do with the actual industrial scene. That's why I put Move to Berlin. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And and I, I agree with you on, you know, I mean, like what you, the way you usually post things, it makes sense. And um, the whole dark techno thing that's really popular now in the, in the scene, like you said, I think, you know, a lot of that was being done previously, but mm -hmm. many people may not have even, you know, noticed that because like you said, they were younger and they weren't even into some of that other stuff at that time. But, yeah. And I, mean, I don't mind that it's, other people doing the same thing because i mean who wants to listen to the same song that's 25 years old no uh, if, if you're 19 your parents are listening to that or they you know <laughs> exactly you know so yeah, you no, have you're to right have your own you're stuff. right you're right 100 percent. you're right it's it's true and so you know you have to have new music out there definitely but go um, ahead i'm sorry Adrian Hates uh, from uh, Diary of Dreams. Yes, he uh, runs Accession Records, which which was the label that uh, released my first two albums. Yeah, and um, I knew him personally at that time. But my first booking agent, Albert uh, of Contract Booking, uh, when he started working with me, Adrian yeah. wrote him an email and said, "When Sami writes emails, just imagine a <laughs> grandfatherly smiling voice." in the email Aww. and then you'll be fine because uh, he said my emails are so direct and so short to the point because i want to convey the information i did at that time it was almost like autistic or something like that yeah. but, um, when he said that to albert i was like ah now i understand now i'm not mad at him because i was like oh i'm in a good mood let me write him an email and he was like uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and i know albert i know albert pretty well because i mean uh he's come over here played with oh. suicide commando many times and so yes, i've, yes. I've yes. had a chance to hang out with him and meet him a number of times from booking he's a good him guy. over here he's very nice yeah yes They're very nice and i did get the chance to meet adrian too because they actually came i booked them uh for a show here in tampa and um they came and played it was a number of years ago now but yeah. very yeah they're all very nice people though and mm -hmm. and yeah, albert yeah albert's a albert's a good guy yeah. We so, took diorama, or we took uh, Diary of Dreams to the beach. Yeah, oh, they got that's right. burned. That's right. I, I forgot <laughs> yeah. about that whole experience. That's, that's the right. whole thing. When any, Diary whenever of the any beach. of the, the Germans come over here, they go to the beach. They don't wear sunblock, and then they just—I call them lobster people. Because then the next yeah, time yes. I see them, they're just bright red. <laughs> <laughs> I would be the same. I mean, I wouldn't go to the beach, but I would be bright red if I did. So yeah. All right, yeah. Sammy. Well, I don't want to keep you any longer. I know you got a DJ gig you're getting to. We truly thank you very much for coming out here. And yeah. again, um, thank you. you. Go uh, Halloween Spooky Queens version 2022. Yes. Uh, that is on YouTube. You can of course pick it up on Bandcamp for purchase. It, if you want to purchase the music, which you should do. Uh, but again, if you want to give real quick the final information for the giveaway that we're doing this week. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what we're giving away this week is three times access to a recorded studio stream, which is a video of me producing the song Halloween Spooky Queens uh, 2022 version. So basically you get to see and uh, follow the process of me making that song about three and a half hours long. Nice. And all you have to do is go to the video on YouTube and comment, yes, I want it, which is one line of the song. And it also, it means you want to enter the the uh, competition. Contest, and then right, we can go yeah. there. All right, cool. And then we'll pick some winners. Yeah, so there you go. All right, Perfect. so do it. And thank you so much again. We truly appreciate you coming on and joining I, I us. I really appreciate your support, man. I. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm very happy that you did this uh, with me for like a whole month. And uh, I hope your, your audience <laughs> didn't get too annoyed by the, what it was called? Sammy Ween. Sammy, Sammy Ween. Ween. I love that. Sammy <laughs> Ween. That's a great one. That's great. All right. Well, we appreciate it. And yeah, you have a, uh, you have a, you enjoy the rest of your evening. Guys. And Oh, and before we go, Winter's got one more song coming up, but bye, Sammy. Take bye. care. Bye. Take care. All right. So now we're going to go to the last song of the show. 
And I will be playing brand new Cold Gray Rain out of France. And the song is The End of Faith. It's the End of Faith single. Um, he, he's on In Club Records. This song hit me hard. It's about the um, everything going on with the earth and the environment. And um, it's a really good song. So come back. back.
welcome back to Coming After Dark. I hope you enjoyed the last track of our set. And we hope you enjoyed the interview and the longer show we've had here with Sammy. I mean, normally, uh, you know, we try to uh, keep the show concise, but we wanted to make sure that Sammy uh, was able to um, give you information because we've, we've been big Fader, hand, Fader Head fans here for a long time. Um, and we're just so honored that he actually came on our show. So we hope you you stuck around, listen to the music, listen to the interview. Um, and yeah, check out everything again on our, our uploads. They go up Monday and Tuesday. The YouTube show goes up Tuesday and you'll be able to see the video on Tuesday. All right. And thank you again to Mary Catman, by the way. I do want to mention that uh, she was a fantastic guest last week. And thank you very much to her for coming on and um, joining us last week. And next week is our Halloween special. <laughs> That's right. Halloween, we're going to be dressing up and being playing some spooky music for you. So Halloween special next week. Come back and uh, we hope you'll uh, stick around for some scary stuff. And I just but, wanted to add in, there were uh -huh. two people that sent in samples videos because I asked people to yeah. uh, post spooky samples. Unfortunately, both those samples have already been used. Um, from both those movies. Um, so I just let Paradise uh, pick the sample. So yeah. that's what happened with that. <laughs> so I picked it. Got The Shining. Um, I picked I'm not, it. That's one of my I, favorite I wanna, movies ever. I want to say if it was ever used, it was a long time ago. Um, not that one. When it was used. And but I don't I know if that one was used at shining. all. Love The Shining. I, I'm not was even that, a was horror that, was fan was that, was that from the old show when Mark told us to go and stab somebody? No, don't say <laughs> that. And that was so many years ago. Oh my God, that was when we were really. That was when we first started out. That was a long time. I didn't say that. I said, I said, don't stab anybody if they come to your door trick or treating. <laughs> oh my God, that was so many. Man, oh man, that was that was way back. You know, we should give a we should give away a gift. Hey, I got I got a ton of extra music here. If anybody can find the episode where I said that, I will send you some music. Some some music that I don't know that I have some double of some vinyl or something that I have I doubt anybody will find it but if you do let me know all right um, donations this week because again without the people who are donating we really honestly couldn't keep the show running so thank you to everybody who keeps donating to the podcast we got one new monthly donator which is awesome because it helps us out when we uh, may lose somebody along the way or whatever but just getting new people is fantastic Kai. Perigo and Kai um, actually won one of the Faderhead shirts is a new monthly donor to the podcast. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Amy Black, who just had a birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Amy. Amy. Happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Nixon, Peter G, Aaron Euro, Kalani Robinson, uh, Jonas Johansson, Christopher Starr, uh, Catherine Donahue, Evan Wajinga, the Purge, who just played here in Tampa at Absolution hey. Fest. Yeah, he, I, I enjoyed his show. I thought Thomas was it's excellent. really good. Yep. Ross Martinez, Andres Mirzik, a Biblio dude, Anders Shaunatin of the of the band Module One, um, Lance Cooley, who donates on it twice a month. Thank you very much, Lance, for all your help, Mad Scientist. Pamela Gelino, who also donates twice a month from Alaska. And James Trimarco. Rebecca Van Herk from Australia, Jens R. Munson, Alan Snook, and Jonathan Moser. Thank you all very, very much. Now, if you want to become a one-time donator to the podcast, all you have to do, do is go to comeafterdark.com and, uh, yeah, donate. That's all. There's a donate button on there. Just click it, and don't click the uh, option where it says monthly, okay? So that's all you have to do. We did get one this week from Richard Norris, who's from the U.K., and Richard said thank you to the uh, crew. I first started listening to CAD three years ago, and because of you, I saw Mono Inc. in concert. They were brilliant, so thanks to you all. Keep up the good work, Richard from Hall, England. So thank you so much, Richard. I love that comment, and I'm glad we were able to turn you on to Mono Inc. I think they're a fantastic band, and I'm, I'm very excited about their brand new album that's coming out soon. And I did want to read one comment, I mean, because we kind of ran out of time here. But we had asked people uh, recently about um, Alaska because Pamela, who is a monthly donor to our podcast, um, is from Alaska. And we were like, well, I don't think we have any other people who are listening to us from Alaska. Well, we did get a comment this week 
from um, the person's name is Corey. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's not Corey. I, could, I'm a, I apologize. Cody Leslie. And uh, Cody said, I tried to, uh, I'm sorry. Cody said that they are from Alaska and that they ha- are a listener for our show. They just had listened recently for about two to three months. But now, uh, obviously, uh, the uh, person is now listening again. And yeah, they're from Alaska. So we've got two, two listeners from Alaska. That is amazing. All the way from Alaska. We appreciate that very much. Thank you, Cody, for that comment. All right. <clears throat> and if I screwed up your name, yeah, you can kick me in the ass if you ever see me. And then right. I just wanted to say um, I've liked um, the comments the over the past couple weeks that people yes. are accepting of me being on the show and being warm and inviting. So thank you for that because very big shoes to fill. Um, yes. yes. But Mouse is one of my best friends of over 26 years. So not yeah. going to do Mouse wrong. So Yeah, Mouse is doing Mouse is <laughs> Mouse is doing well She's and doing she, well. And um uh, again, uh you will see Mouse here on the show in the future. Uh we just don't have an exact date for you at this point. But I would shoot for maybe like towards the end of the year when we have our year end shows. So come, you know, stick around for all that. But that's it. We want to say goodbye for the week and we'll come back for our Halloween special next week. Halloween. We Halloween. Woo. Cheers. Bye. 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 See you next week. I right, see you next week. See ya. Bye. Will someone turn off that music? That's enough. I'm putting an end to this freak show right now. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>